Welcome everybody. First off, I'd like to give a really big shout out to Linux Help Guy. Um, he has a lot of good videos on his web channel and he inspired me to go ahead and start doing Linux videos on mine that uh, I didn't for the versions that I use. <clears throat> also, I'm going to make some tutorials, um, but I just want to give everybody a quick uh, introduction to my channel uh, for my Linux content as well as uh, what I use on my own computer. Okay, so right now we're looking at the desktop of my main laptop as a Gigabyte P25. It's got 16 gig of RAM and a Core, um, core i7 uh, 2700. That's pretty high end for a laptop at the time it was made. It's uh, getting to be about two years old now. Um, there's already replacements out that are faster, but I like this one. It also has a dedicated NVIDIA graphics card in it, so it does the desktop animation real smooth and it's pretty powerful. It also has Intel integrated graphics, which is what we're looking at right now. Um, but if I do web or video con or sorry video content or games, it switches to the um, to the NVIDIA card in it, uh, which uses a bit more power but gives outstanding graphics. Uh, this is full uh, HD on this screen, full at 1920 by 1080. As you can see, um, this if you're not familiar with this, this is the KDE desktop. It's a giveaway is the little K up here. Um, I'm using Home Run Kicker as the launcher that I'm using because I just I just like this a little better. It gives me a more um, I don't know I guess something I'm more used to. Uh, you can use multiple different interfaces, uh, start buttons, stuff. Uh, the one that comes by default with KDE four. Um, it's really nice. It's been really good for new users. Uh, this one, if you know the, what you're looking for, know the names of your programs, Home Run Kicker is more customizable. So I kind of like that. Of course, I've got my, my file manager and I've got my basic settings, system settings, right there, nice and handy. And those are ones that I put there. Uh, file manager comes default, I put this there. Um, Pardon me, I'm using MROC for my media player, my video player, sorry, my music player. Um, of course, got File Manager open for my videos. Uh, so, real quick, you know, this is the, the home page for Manjaro Linux. Um, of course, again, mine's the, um, mine's the KDE version of the 1509, uh, which this, you know, they bring out updates periodically. Anytime there's a security update, they take it out get it out to you really fast. Um, but there's multiple different desktop styles and I'll go into those on a later video. Uh, right now I'm using Firefox as my browser which I like that better than uh, most others. It gives me really good content uh, content handling and they're, they've been really good lately about getting the security patches out really fast for it which I really do like. Okay I also use Simple Screen Recorder and that's what I'm using right now to make this video. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, it's got the notifier panel. Um, this shows Amrock in here as well. Um, I've also got Apper, which Apper is a, a. I like this a little better for the um, for the file or for your. It's basically the app, app store and the updates handler. Uh, this isn't the one that comes natively. I installed this off of the Arch repository, uh, but I really do like the interface a little better. I uh, kind of wish. That was an option with uh, instead of Octopi. Uh, now Octopi is what's currently there. Uh, we'll get that to the moment. I'm also this is um, <clears throat> this is my uh, G Firewall D. Uh, Firewall D. Uh, you can find that if you just type Firewall D and and you can find that and it installs and it activates a full a fire, full system D firewall on the system instead of using IP tables. Uh, this is the the clip center, so anything you've copied, it keeps in a, it keeps everything in there. Tells you what it is. You know, you can go back and recopy it and paste it other places. Uh, this is my the volume control. It's for the uh, Pro Audio. <clears throat> right, pulse. Sorry, Pulse Audio. Um, that's the new icon they use for that. Um, I've also got Bluetooth on this laptop. Um, that's part of the um, Intel 720AC. Bluetooth adapter that I have in here and of course my Wi-Fi and the clock. Well the clock I customized to be that uh, kind of lime fluorescent green like a terminal kind of harkens back to my original days with Linux. Um, Octopi is what you normally get 
Um, let's open that up. That, that handles your updates as well as it does. It's the interface to run what they call Pac-Man, which is Package Manager, which runs on the command line. Uh, this one, it gives you the information for each application of what it is, but it doesn't give you as nice as interface as what the app set does. That's A-P-P-S-E-T. But this is what comes base with, um, with Manjaro, and I'm not going to cover that too much right now. Um, <clears throat> so you can see I've got a, a little display over here. This isn't ComKey. This is what's called a Simple Monitor. And these are also um, widgets that I've added to the desktop. Uh, they're plasmoid widgets. So if you want plasmoid widgets, you right-click on the desktop and you choose Add Widgets. And you've got all these that are supplied from the from the package. Um, and there's quite a few in there. Um, but if you, there's if you don't find what you like or don't find one that you you really enjoy, you can choose Get App Gadgets right here, and then. So you can see here that I've got simple the simple monitor displayed. <clears throat> so let's go back on that. Um, I found that by going in the search box and just typing system. So you just type it and then that, they pull up everything that, it, that relates to that. And it's right here, system, simple system monitor. And then these other widgets here are a network monitor and disk monitor. Uh, which are also in here uh, that you can find. A uh, nice thing in this is if you have something installed, it'll tell you it's installed. So let me go back up to the simple record or the yeah, plasmoid. That's another one. Hard hardware monitor. That's another one I have installed. Um, if I go up to the simple, it tells me uninstall. If it's one I don't have, it says install instead of uninstall. So that's how you can tell in here if you already have it. Um, so we'll close that, but I'll go into that more depth later. Um, like I said, this is just kind of a, a, an entry or intro to what I have and what I use. Um, <clears throat> this little bar down here is called Cario. That's the Cario launcher. And this little uh, switcher, this is the pane switcher, shows what desktop I'm using. Um, that's also part of Cario. So that, because Cario is installed and it, it manages the desktops, the dock bar stays with every desktop that I switch to, which I do like that. I mean, as you can see up here, my plasmoids and widgets are all different on each page. I don't have everything on that's on the first on my main screen on every different window that I run, and I've got up to four desktops on this laptop. So that's you can set that up to use different wallpapers, different widgets. Um, that's really easy to do because you just go into your desk, uh, you go into your um, system settings. Default desktop lets you choose your web your backgrounds. Uh, your uh, your background images, uh, but you have to go into system settings and choose the window behavior and window appearance desktop effects. It'll be in those. Uh, this is the uh, the works what's it workspace behavior. Um, you can use these. You know, go into these and you can set up like in here. I've got virtual desktops. I can change that anywhere from one to as many as I really want. Um, I think we can probably yeah we can probably go up to oh we can so we went up to 12 desktops it's pretty good but I'm gonna keep mine on four <laughs> let's go back to four there we go anyway and then you just choose apply if you want you know I'm not gonna make any changes on that so I don't have to we're just gonna discard those <coughs> pardon me so that's a, a quick introduction to what I use for Linux, and in the near future I will be putting up a few more videos uh, that are Linux-based. Uh, currently what I have on is mostly games and a couple of, you know, just random odds and ends videos. Uh, but uh, Linux Help Guy just kind of he's inspired me to go ahead and do more regular content for Linux, because I, I mainly use Linux, as, that's my, is my daily driver. I do have another machine that has Windows 8 on it, or Windows 8.1 Pro, um, and, but my two laptops that I'm, I have only run Linux. Um, I like it, it's a lot lighter weight, it's just as powerful, if not more powerful in a lot of ways than Windows, and I'm not I'm not tied down to the stupid uh, Windows, Windows uh, anti-piracy garbage, where, you know, I'm not out there to, I, I paid for the licenses that I have, 
And even with Manjaro, I've donated to the devs because I really like what they're doing with it. But if I do a hardware upgrade, I want to be able to take my operating system with me onto the new hardware with Windows. As soon as I upgrade um, any major component in it, motherboard, um, CPU, RAM, or video card, then they treat me like I just like I'm a pirate and I just stole their operating system. So I have to jump through a bunch of hoops with Microsoft, call up their support line, put in a 30-digit code that it generates on my for my install, and then I have to tell them that yes, I agree to your terms, and I'm only using it on one computer. Uh, basically, you know, they're just treating me like I'm a criminal, even though all I did was upgrade my CPU or I upgraded my video card. You know, it, it doesn't make sense that, you know, changing the hardware like that, if I'm still using the same hard drive um, and I still have that hard drive installed, it doesn't matter what I install that hard drive in, I should be able to run that license because that license shouldn't be on the entire computer. It should only be on that hard drive. Um, and if I want to upgrade my hard drive, if the CPU and the motherboard are the same, who cares if I upgraded the hard drive? The, the computer itself, if any one of those components are still the same, Microsoft should not give a damn that I have that operating system on it or what I'm doing with that particular license. As long as they only have one license showing up in their database that's active on any piece of individual hardware they want to try you know tie it down to that's all they need to do they don't need to do all of them and if you change do any major upgrades to your computer you shouldn't have to to be treated like a criminal and or buy a brand new license for your computer and i've i got tired of microsoft and in fact i'm not buying any no doing any more with microsoft really except for i run a couple of games on that computer and that'll be eventually migrated over to manjaro or to Linux Mint, uh, but I will have that on another distro. Anyway, guys, um, I'm going to wrap it up for now. I do appreciate uh, if you like this, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, let me know in the comments uh, what you would like to see a little more details on as well, and I'll uh, try to get that out as I can. Uh, but I will be putting out some more content, uh, hopefully to try to enrich the community and add more to uh, add more quality content to YouTube for Linux. Uh, thank you so much for watching again and have a great day.